Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It's good to see each and every one of you here today. And I do want to welcome you to this space, which becomes for us sacred space, because here we gather in the name of Christ. Y'all just might let me take a minute to just unleash that. Can we move this uh, up a little closer for me? If we um, back. There you go. Thanks. Okay, that'll be a better adjustment. Um, thank you. Okay, they, they forgot I, I wasn't uh, tall, and I can't quite lean that far out. Um, it's so good to be here today, though, to worship God in this beautiful outdoor second Sunday of Advent. And didn't Rick Frierson provide us a beautiful introduction to this service? As we gather, I, I hesitate to, to remind you of what you've probably already read in print and you already know that we are continuing to be very vigilant about monitoring our wearing of masks so that unless you are directly speaking into the microphone, uh, we do ask you to wear a mask and we ask you to continue to practice social distancing. We do keep a register of your attendance and someone is even now recording a second registration sheet just in case till we can match them up and be sure we have everyone recorded. Should anyone in this gathering test positive, we will notify you uh, so that you can do the appropriate precautions for yourself. But we do try to be vigilant and we want you to be vigilant, not only here while we worship together, but as you go into the community because I do believe that what we do with wearing masks and practicing social distances really makes a difference. And so I believe God calls us in all times and in all places to make a difference in the world. So we can do that. And if you need help, we've got masks for you. So just let me know if you need one. Uh, but we're so glad that you are here today and we invite you to worship God as, as we continue in many ways of service here not just in singing together and listening to the spiritual words of God through Christ, but also as we support many endeavors in our community. To my left, you'll see our Heifer Project International Table, where we are uh, collecting for our wonderful um, project that we do every year. We hope that you will participate in a generous way as we extend God's love to these folks around the world. Also, we have our Alcorn Middle School collection, which is a way for us to contribute to the needs of children in our community who are food insecure, even when they go home at night. So we continue this mission. And of course, we participate in giving for Epworth each year at Christmas, and that can be accessed by going to our website at wsmethodist.org and clicking on the links that follow to giving for Epworth. So many ways that we can share in the work that God is doing in the world and be light and joy in this particular season. I invite you now to worship the Lord. And that few 
future you shall see. And now, if you would join me in the opening prayer. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. God of Israel, with expectant hearts, we, your people, await Christ's coming. As once he came in humility, so now may he come in glory, that he may make all things perfect in your everlasting kingdom. For he is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Please join me in the opening hymn, the Carol. gospel lesson this afternoon comes from the book of Mark chapter 1 verses 1 through 8. Hear now the word of the Lord. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ the Son of God as it was as it is written in the prophet Isaiah. See I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness Prepare the way of the Lord, 
make straight his paths. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a, baptiz a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. John the baptizer was an oddity. He sort of shows up every advent like that uncle that nobody knows exactly how he's connected to the family, but he shows up. Mark even wrote it, he appeared in the wilderness. This strange man dressed in camel's hair and leather, eating wild honey and locust, he appeared and he called people to repent of their sins and to be baptized. He spoke to them of things that had been and things that were to come. His very presence made people think about what they had heard in Torah school as children. Something about a messenger, a prophet, someone coming to prepare the way of the Lord. Was it Elijah? Isaiah, Jeremiah, they probably thought something like what we think. 
I'll have to look that up. Or maybe I need to ask the rabbi about that text. And then Jesus shows up. And Jesus begins to preach and teach and heal the sick. He spoke words of mercy while performing deeds of power and awe. He taught with an authority that made even the scribes and the Pharisees take notice. And everything he said and everything he did leaned into grace, leaned into love, leaned into mercy. His message was countercultural to his religion and also to his politics. I suspect that his presence sent even the most ordinary people scrambling to hear again the words of the prophets. No doubt they were all struck by such passages as wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. Can you imagine what they thought when they saw Jesus performing these deeds of power and heard those words? I bet they started listening with new interest as the texts were read in the synagogues. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. All of a sudden, these words took on new meaning. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people shall see it together. I think they became profoundly aware that John didn't just appear in the wilderness and Jesus did not simply show up. They realized that there was more to this prophet John and more to this rabbi named Jesus. Perhaps they began to think about words like fulfilled, expected, the anointed one, Maybe they began to suspect what seemed like the beginning wasn't really the beginning at all. The first words of Mark's gospel read, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And then he immediately quoted the prophet Isaiah. I think Mark was on to something. I think maybe Mark had begun to think about the very first words in Scripture in the beginning and how God created all things and called them good. I think Mark maybe began to reflect on all that he understood and knew about the history of his people, how God had always come to them with love and mercy and grace from the garden to the exile, from the exile into the promised land, and even in those devastating years of captivity in Babylon, even then God was with them and had brought them back to their homeland. Maybe he began to think like the disciple John, that this Jesus had been in the very heart of God in the beginning. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Maybe Mark who was really considered the less educated of the gospel writers, realized that the beginning was indeed before anyone ever 
saw Jesus. Maybe he realized that this man we call Jesus was more than a rabbi for their time. He was God incarnate for them, for the world, and for all time. Perhaps Mark understood that the good news began in the heart of God in the beginning. And that's where the good news begins for us in our hearts. Just think about it. When did it begin for you? When did the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, begin in your heart? Maybe it was on a youth retreat while you were sitting around a bonfire singing songs about Jesus. Maybe it was standing in a dimly lit sanctuary, lighting a candle and singing Silent Night, Holy Night. Maybe you were living your life and suddenly you heard words that made you think about stories that you'd heard when you were a child in Bible school at a little Methodist church in the country. And they sent you searching for what those words meant. Searching for God. Maybe a friend spoke to you about her church and you decided to give it a try. And somehow, while you were there, you heard a message from the very heart of God. Whenever, wherever it happens, the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, comes from the heart of God into the hearts of human beings. And where there is good news, there is joy. A joy that wells up within. A joy that is unshaken by circumstance. A joy that turns our mourning into dancing. A joy that turns our laments into songs of praise. Filled with this joy, we are transformed and we become, we become messengers of the good news in the world and for the world. We become the people who continue the story that began in the heart of God in the beginning. Just think about who we are right now. We are the ones who sing give thanks with a grateful heart in the middle of a pandemic. We're the ones who speak words of hope even when the numbers of COVID-19 cases are increasing. We're the people who sing about light even when our nation and our world face a dark time of crisis. We are the people who light candles, who read prophecies, and we share stories about shepherds and wise men and angels singing in the heavens about a baby born in a manger when all the world is looking for a superhero. You know, one that wears a cape. We are the good news in a world filled with sadness, despair, and fear. And here we are. We gather and we sing with joy. Even when we are apart, we rejoice in God our Savior. Even now we look to the heavens and we remember a star. We remember that on a night in Bethlehem, angels sang into the heavens to common shepherds. And we share this good news of Jesus Christ with one another and with our neighbors in carols 
and songs of praise and the ways we worship virtually and in the ways that we serve our community. We are the people who continue the story that began in the heart of God in the beginning. The good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Even now, even now, we trust in the one who has come. Even now, we believe that he is with us. Even now, we believe that he will come again. This is a source of our joy. This is the foundation of our hope that resides in the heart of God and in our hearts. This is the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, that we share with joy. Alleluia. Amen. Would you please stand and join me as we affirm our faith using our Advent Credo. It is not true that creation and the human family are doomed to destruction and loss. This is true. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. It is not true that we must accept inhumanity and discrimination, hunger and poverty, death and destruction. This is true. I have come that they may have life and that abundantly. It is not true that violence and hatred should have the last word and that war and destruction rule forever. This is true. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting, the Prince of Peace. It is not true that we are simply victims of the powers of evil who seek to rule the world. This is true. To me is given authority in heaven and on earth, and lo, I am with you, even until the end of the world. It is not true that we have to wait for those who are specially gifted, who are the prophets of the church before we can be peacemakers. This is true. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall have dreams. It is not true that our hopes for liberation of humankind, of justice, of human dignity, of peace, are not meant for this earth and for this history. This is true. The hour comes, and it is now, that the true worshipers shall worship God in spirit and in truth. So let us enter Advent in hope, even hope against hope. Let us see visions of love and peace and justice. Let us affirm with humility, with joy, with faith, with courage, Jesus Christ, the life of the world. be seated.
as we gather together today, I want to call us into a time of prayer for our congregation, our friends and neighbors, our community, and our world. Today, I want to share with you that Don Fowler has been hospitalized, and uh, they are continuing to do tests there. Also, that Keith McCook lost his mother on Wednesday of this week, and so we remember the McCook family in our thoughts and in our prayers. Let us go to the Lord as we pray together. Holy God, we are so grateful that even in the beginning, you had each one of us in mind, that even in the beginning, you made a plan and made a way for us to be reconciled to you through the life, death, and resurrection of your son, Jesus. We are so thankful that even in these times of fear and anxiety, that we can gather as your people and with joy give you thanks and praise. For you are indeed a good and holy God, and you call us to be a holy people. You call us to give the joyful good news of your love to all in the world. And so when we come together, Lord, we come knowing that we are only here to be filled up and sent out. That we are only here to receive your word so that we might carry it anew. That it might resonate in our hearts and might give new energy to our witness. We pray, O oh Lord, as we gather for those who are sick and suffering, especially those whom we name in our hearts. We give thanks for every sign of healing and hope that we have witnessed. And pray, O oh God, that you would send your healing grace upon all the world. We pray, O oh Lord, for people who are anxious about many things. And we ask, O oh Lord, that you bring comfort to their hearts. Especially we pray that you would comfort those who are isolated and alone at this time. Remembering especially our neighbors in nursing homes and care facilities. We pray for those, O oh God, who are isolated because of COVID and especially for those who cannot do what they would love to do for the people they care about. We entrust them to your care, O oh Lord, and pray for your healing mercy. We pray, O oh Lord, for our community, our nation, our world, that we might know once again what it means to be people who hear good news who experienced fully the joy of knowing you. We pray for your church throughout the world that wherever she is, she bears faithful witness to your love that is extended to all people. And now we ask you to hear as we join our hearts in the prayer that Jesus taught his first disciples to pray saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Oh, you're the one that 
And now go into the world to share the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. To share the joy. To share the hope. To share this great good news of what the angels gave so long ago. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace to all. Amen. And I'm in.